Hello, I'm Oral Gibbs and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. I have a very interesting guest. You'll meet my guest after these words. The Windward Island Bank in Phillipsburg, cul-de-sac and Simpson Bay for all your banking needs. It's the Windward Islands Bank and GEBE or Local Water and Electricity Company. GEBE serving St. Martin for over six decades. That's GEBE. And with me here on the Oral Gibbs Live, I have uh, Mr. Joseph, this is Joseph Isaac is the Chief Meteorologist at the Met Office here in St. Martin. Welcome to the program. How are you doing, Mr. Isaac? Uh, good day to you, sir. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here representing the Meteorological Department of St. Martin and trying to impart knowledge to the public on the challenges we face when it comes to um, weather phenomena and what persons should know. Um, where to get the information and so on. And we always pride ourselves to work with the media because the media is the conduit that can get the information to the public. If we have the information and we cannot get it to the public, it's always a problem. We don't run a, a radio station at the Met Office. So um, the media, we like to form good partnerships with the media and we all know the challenges with social media and so on. So we try to always have ourselves available mm -hmm. to speak with the media. Well, I want to thank you for um, accepting the invitation and being here. You know, you mentioned social media. That's a big problem on this island. Before social media, it wasn't an issue. You got your weather service, the issue bulletins, that was it. Now people are going on social media, checking all sites and forming their own opinion. Is that a challenge for you as a weatherman? Yes, the, 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 the challenges of social media are real. Um, and again, that is why it is so important from the Met Service that we be on top of our game and um, work very closely with the media to try and get the right information out. However, there is a sort of advantage also to social media because we use social media to get information out. Right. And um, we would appreciate that if you want to get to young persons that you have to use social media. The other important thing um, why I say social media can also be an advantage is that the information may or not always be correct, mm -hmm. but the information is out there. So um, if persons are smart and they know exactly what to do, um, once there are certain concerns about any weather information or any um, weather system being developed, even if they get it on social media um, from whatever entity they would get it on social media, mm -hmm. it, it is an eye-opener that they need now to check the, the authorized government entities that would give the necessary information. So, uh, yes, it is a challenge. A lot of times we have to try and correct misconceptions coming from social media. Um, some persons on social media are what we call fly-by-night meteorologists. They get information and they try to interpret and their interpretation may not be correct. Um, some of them may have very good graphics and that would appeal to persons a lot. Um, and also on the negative side of things is uh, some of the graphics they use and sometimes some graphics are legitimate. Um, some, some models are legitimate. Some of the same models we use but then at the end of the exercise, the interpretation is what is important, and sometimes people add text to those graphics, and uh, that's where the problem is. Uh, the The bigger issue, though, is that when you when you use some of those graphics, and you, for example, you make a, a WhatsApp post and you you post it wrong, and it, it goes all over. Um, sometimes just the satellite picture that may be used um, because yeah. persons don't understand how to interpret that information, it can be very scary. And that's why we always admonish persons. Uh, we're not saying to lock off social media, lock off internet and whatever. But when you get those things, um, whether it's by via WhatsApp or, or whatever means, you go to the source for information and you try and clarify your information. Um, even, even out of the whole weather scenario, um, it's not anything I get by WhatsApp, I just forward. And I think we have, that's one of the important things. We have a, a responsibility. Um, and it's not anything you just get that you don't check and you just forward. Because if, for example, I get something and I forward it, I forward it to 10 persons. Mm -hmm. And one half hour after, 
I realized that the information in it was incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, even if I send a message to those 10 persons and said that it was incorrect, that message is long gone. Um, and those 10 persons might even worry about uh, checking the 10 persons each of them would have sent it to, that would be a total of 100 persons. You know, so you get that sort of concept. So I, I think we all we have a responsibility, and I want to emphasize that, that we have a responsibility when we receive something um, to, to check, check and see if it is authentic, if it, if it makes sense, and so on, go to the right authorities. And again, like I said, um, for example, some models, what the person might send mm -hmm. might be actually correct. Um, in terms of models and so on, but because people cannot interpret uh, and have enough experience in using models, they may get a wrong impression. Now, there are a number of different models showing the projected path of a hurricane. Um, that's, that makes it difficult for the average person. Yes, it makes it difficult for the average person. And um, if, you, if you think of it, we are actually, meteorologists are actually trained mm how to use models. Um, we know how the models function. So just to give you a synopsis, a, a, a computer model takes a lot of data and um, through certain formulas and so on, you come out with certain interpretations as to what they, you expect the weather mm -hmm. to do. So we, we in the meteorological department of St. Martin, for example, we do upper ear soundings. That's we put off the balloon and we get measurements. Um, the observers, every hour, they would do a weather report, check temperature, humidity, wind direction, and speed, etc. Um, so that is what we call data. Um, even though when we put it in our radar, our radar data would go into, into the um, telecommunication network of the World Meteorological Organization. All that data goes into huge computers, and that's it. That's it data that is processed to give us the models. Um, different companies would have different formulas they use. Some of them would be very high scientific formulas. Some of them are based more on historical data and so on. So just to give you a simple example, if I was looking at a model, for example, uh, looking at a wave coming off the coast of Africa, coming to our area, um, there are certain models I would look at. However, if I was looking at a system in the Caribbean Sea um, moving towards the east, that means coming back, something like Laney and so on, then I would have less confidence in the models. And the reason for having less confidence in the models is that anything coming off the coast of Africa mm. um, from the east, um, would, we would have a lot more data for that. So the models would treat it better. But a system coming from the Caribbean Sea going the other way, there would not be many examples of, of such storms. And as a result, the models may not treat it as well. And that's how models function. So you have some models that are based very strong on statistics mm -hmm. and some that are very based very strong on um, mathematical um, calculations and so on. And models are exactly what they are. And if you, if you really want to be good or store the models and so on, you have to understand that there is a margin of error um, in models. Mm -hmm. And my, my rule of thumb, basically, anything seven days out, I start to look at it, uh, but I don't get too excited about it um, because I know in seven days' time, a lot of things can happen. Again, the way the models function, yeah. if you... If, for example, we, with a recent um, area of disturbed weather we're dealing with, um, the models may show you one thing, um, but when you do get a closed circulation, um, the models may interpret it differently. Um, you, you put in data in the models, you show upper level wind shear at a certain rate, the upper level wind shear might be less mm -hmm. or might decrease, and that alone can change the model. So. Models are really a guide, and over the, over the years, there have been tremendous improvement in the models. But we still have to understand that if you see a model showing seven days out that a, a hurricane is going to be over St. Martin, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen. Um, in fact, the probability is that it will remain for that over the seven days period are very small. So it could either be north or south of St. Martin. 
Um, and then if you see a model that may be showing you something so for St. Martin, you may need to be even more concerned because when things move and things change and so on, then it may um, put it directly over you. So models are not something that I, the, the, the average person should just take and, and get excited about. I think, yes, you need to look at things and so on. And again, it comes back to our whole responsibility because we know what persons have gone through Lewis and Irma and so on. Right. And, and people are, get very feverish um, when, they, when they start talking about weather and so on. Now, if you're going to take something from a model seven days before and, and send it out there, you're really getting persons uptight and so on. Seven days before, you may not even have any impact. And if you do that a few times, um, then people drop their guard. But not that alone. The among the stress you put people on the unnecessary. Right. And that is why we, we, we say that, yes, look at models, look at everything else, but monitor what is happening at the Met Office. Look at what the Met Office is saying on those things, because we will always be making statements when things are relative to us. Um, the other thing, too, is that you have the flip side of the coin. Somebody might look at the model and say, oh, um, the system is going to pass to our north, or the system is going to pass to our south. We don't have anything to worry about. But based on the nature of the system, if it's a strong hurricane, for example, you may have issues to deal with in terms of high seas. Um, you may get an outer band of the system that could give you a significant amount of rainfall. And we know the challenges we have with, with flooding and so on. Um, so that is why we, we, we make sure that we try and keep on the ball and keep information to persons. We, you know we have a website, we have a Facebook page and so on. The information is always available. You know, um, Mr. Isaac, let me just let my uh, viewers and listeners know about this program. You are the chief meteorologist at the Met Office in St. Martin, right? Yeah, well, um, the, the position is called Department Head. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. They changed it uh, over the years. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you're Department Head. And uh, how long have you been at the Met Office now? I have been at the Met Office in St. Martin for 10 years. Um, July 1st gave me 10 years since I've been here. Okay. Um, 20, January 2013, that's when the Met Office of St. Martin took oh. over the forecast responsibilities from Curacao. Uh, before January 2013, um, the forecast and so on used to come from Curacao. Uh, all meteorological services in relation to St. Martin are now being done by the Meteorological Department of St. Martin. We have a, a very good team that, that work to make sure that that has been done. How many persons uh, you have? Uh, we have um, 14 staff. Oh, that's a, that's a lot then. Yeah, uh, so that would be a combination of meteorologists. The meteorologists are the ones who actually oh. forecast the weather. Uh, we have meteorological observers. That's the ones who actually observe the weather every hour mm -hmm. and um, would write what the weather conditions are like and so on. And then we have technicians, two technicians, a secretary and myself. Then we have a department that's responsible for climatology. Climatology is basically statistics for meteorology. So okay. that's the team. We have a very dedicated team. We um, have our challenges like everything else in terms of capacity. Uh, we're trying as much as possible to build capacity. We need more people? Yes, we need more people. Um, but what we want to do is that we want mm -hmm. to basically um, build on what we have. Okay. So as much as possible, we use locals to do the work instead of having to bring some people from overseas. Because of the amount of time it takes for training, sometimes we cannot escape from that if someone yeah. resign and so on. We have to do that. But as much as possible, people come in at the observer level, and then we try and get them up trained to the, to the meteorologist level. But then they have to go to university for that, right? Yeah, they have to be, they have to be trained. Um, the observer program is about a six months training. Then you have the mid-level technician, which is another eight months training. And then we have what we call a senior level meteorological technician, which is the forecasters, which is about um, two years training. So it's a period of time uh, for that training to take place. In fact, right now we have um, one person who will be going out pretty soon to um, complete the forecasters level, and that, that person is from St. Martin. Where are they going, the US or Europe? No, we go to the, the, the Training Institute for um, Meteorology in the region. The WMO Training Center is in Barbados. Oh, okay, That's right next door. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we try, we try, um, in, in the past there have been instances where persons go out to 
um, the Netherlands to get training. Yeah. Um, we, I'm not too much fun of that, and I'll tell you why. It's because when you do that sort of training, they concentrate a lot more on mid latitudes weather. Right. Um, the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology would concentrate a lot more their practical sessions and so on on tropical waves, cyclones, and so on that affect us. So we'll it's come uh, to our area. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in terms of the qualifications and so, it's uh, it's certified by the World Meteorological Organization. So it's a World Meteorological Organization yeah. training center. And um, because we do a lot of work with the Aviation Center, it's also sanctioned by the ICAO, which is the, the institution that governs um, standards for aviation. Okay. Do you still have to bring in forecasters from Curacao like they did in the past? No, no. Everything is done here. Um, we only have basically one relationship with, with Curacao in terms of weather is that we have joint membership with Curacao on mm -hmm. the World Meteorological Organization. Oh, okay. But um, in terms of operation, we function um, as an independent entity. So I report to the Secretary General of TIAT. Um, and not to anyone else. Okay. And, and the minister responsible for meteorology, which is the minister of Tiat. You know, when, when you look at St. Martin, it's a small island, and um, you have to report on 16 square mile area, then you have the French side, it's 21 square miles. Is there any kind of coordination or cooperation, say, with the French side? Because I think Guadeloupe handles that section, right? Well, I mean, you would appreciate that officially Guadeloupe handles what would be responsible for um, the French side. Mm. But um, we being the only meteorological service on the island, um, most persons would listen to our reports. Oh, okay. um, so we do not have an official responsibility for the French side, but any weather that would affect us would affect them. So uh, persons on the French side would listen to our forecast, the radio stations on the French side would play our forecast and so on. Um, in terms of a relationship, yes, we have a very good relationship with, with the French side and with Meteo France. In fact, the radar project we're now doing right. is a collaborated effort between um, the government of St. Martin, uh, the government of St. Martin, the French side, and um, the European Union on the special project Interreg. So it's um, three different entities coming together to do right. that project. That took years to... <laughs> yes, um, you know, again, um, the bureaucracies of mm -hmm. everything else, the legalities and, and everything else back and forth. Uh, but it's, it's so nice and sort of a relief now, although we're still having one or two little challenges to see that hopefully soon mm -hmm. we expect to start seeing um, radar pictures out and that would enhance. That's going to be beautiful for you. Yeah, that would enhance our forecast a lot, especially yeah. short term forecasting. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people get a wrong perception of a, of a radar. It doesn't take off all your problems, um, but it helps a lot, and it helps all significantly in, in the aviation sector. Mm. Um, so you could see um, rainfall and that sort of thing a, a lot better. So that's just one of the projects we, we have. We're also looking at a project of doing um, a network of weather stations on mm. the island. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have more data and persons would be able, to be able to specifically click on our website and go to, for example, Phillipsburg and see exactly what the, the winds, uh -huh. um, temperature and so on in that area. So we have a few projects doing. So we work very well um, with, with the French. But even further than that, when it comes to watches and warnings and so on for mm -hmm. tropical cyclones, we also collaborate very closely with Antigua Med Service because Antigua Med Service would be responsible for Anguilla. Oh, and um, okay. the, the Netherlands Med Service, came and I, which is responsible for Seba and Stacia. Wow. Now, if you think of it, mm. almost any system coming in our area would affect um, Seba, Stacia, St. Martin, St. Marte, Anguilla. Right. So what we try to do is we, we collaborate so that when there is a watch or warning out, it goes to all the territories at the same time. So you don't have a watch out for Dutch St. Martin and nothing for the French. So all the islands right. in this area. So it doesn't always happen, but we try as much as possible to to get it done that way. And sometimes you have to um, give and take in that you, you may feel that it's not time for a watch, but the French feel it's time for a watch. So 
um, give and take and so on, just not to confuse and persons more. Yeah, I noticed that they they're very conservative when it comes to watches. They yes, and they they they, they, they conservative for a very good reason, and um, sometimes persons don't understand exactly what is happening because the French use a color code system. Mm. A lot of what they're doing and when they put out the color code could cover a, a, a storm that is not very strong or high winds and so on yeah. under the color code. We do not use a color code system. So we would cover it in terms of trying to get a watch out so that persons know something is in the area. But with the French, once they have their color code, they may not necessarily want to put a watch. So, so these are the little technical things. We're looking at putting in a color code. Um, in fact, when I came here, there was a color code, but the color code was different from what the French used. So it was a color code based on Curacao. You have to coordinate it with them now. Yeah, so uh, um, I, I think it was a little bit mm. confusing um, to have one mm. land, small island with two different color codes. So we, we emphasize most of our work now on, on text, but we would be working on a color code to sort of synchronize yeah. with Meteor France. And that would be good. Um, in terms of the radar, how far east will you be able to see with the new radar? Well, the, the, way, the way radars function, um, you, can, you can go all out to about uh, 400 kilometers. Okay. But then it depends on what you're going to see because from that's better than the, the old one. Yeah, the, the, but the, for example, the radar that's now covering us would be both Puerto Rico and Guadalupe. Mm. But depends on what you can see from there because um, radar beams move at an angle and they move up. So anything that is too far, uh, they wouldn't get clouds at a lower level. Um, and, and that is one of the reasons we, not only us, but um, even Antigua and Anguilla and so on, they're really anxious of having the radar because we're really in a gap in the Caribbean that we do not have proper coverage because of the distance, the radar in Puerto Rico and the radar in um, Guadalupe. So when they project the beams, a lot of time, unless a cloud has very strong vertical extent, um, you may not see anything, but there's a possibility that you get rain because the, the beam that is sent out is sent over the cloud. So um, that is how it works. So having a radar here would really help all the countries around us to get um, better coverage in terms of what is happening. It, you know, it, it's amazing, Mr. Isaac, because now that it's coming, I think by October, probably? Yeah, yeah by, 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 we're hoping that by October we should be online. Mm. Um, and then we would, it would be available on, on our website and so on, so that persons can just click. Also, oh, we can see it on the website? That's yeah. great. That's yeah, good. It will be on the website. And uh, I know Puerto Rico is going to be happy too because then they have that extra layer that you mentioned. Well, the, also, the, also the National Hurricane Center, because mm -hmm. the National Hurricane Center is responsible for tropical cyclones off the coast of Africa, comes right across to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, the U.S. and Canada and so on. Yeah. And um, any tools available and so on because the, the way weather works, there are no um, boundaries. So any tools available that they can put in so they can use tools to see things better, it's, it's always good. So we will get that sort of support. The, the radar also will form part of the Caribbean. There's a Caribbean composite of radars and it will also be incorporated in that so persons can just go on and see exactly what is happening yeah. in the region. Um, it will take some time for calibration. There are certain things that have to be done and so on. So when we start getting pictures, it will not be used officially until the proper Everything. calibration and so on um, has taken place. But at least we're moving in, in the right direction. And all of this will not be possible without the European Union? Yes, the European Union contribute contributed um, under the Interreg um, project for the French. Mm -hmm. um, the collectivity would, would contribute and um, St. Martin, we, we contribute to the project. The, the, the radar would be on St. Peter's Hill, the same site of the old radar. Yeah. And we would be responsible for maintenance and running the radar because we are the ones with a med service on the island. But again, like everything else, the information coming from the radar and the data and everything else, it goes straight to um, Meteor France in Toulouse and through the World Meteorological Organization Network, okay. Telecommunications Network, it, it would be available 
You, does the Met Office in St. Martin still receive some funding from the U.S. in terms of the service? Yes, we still have, and, and, and that's the important thing because the nature of weather is, is such that. So, for example, yes, you have meteorologists here, they work at the meteorological departments and Martin, the observers and so on, but we really work globally because our work is used globally. Even, even our climatology, when you're looking at climate change and so on, the data we collect and we assimilate and process and so on, it's been used worldwide. Um, so it, meteorology is a global, um, global thing, so you really work globally. In terms of collaboration with the U.S., yes, the, you would know that we do um, upper air soundings, so that is where we release the balloon, right. and um, as it goes up, it, it, it takes up basically a sample of the atmosphere. Um, wind direction, speed, temperature, and so on, sends it back to front or to our office, and then that goes out globally. The human resource of that, we, we do it, um, but the reusables, like the balloon and mm. the sensors and so on, um, that is pro provided by the National Weather Service of the U.S. Um, and it's a very good collaboration because um, uh, these this equipments are very expensive. And every time you let off a balloon and a sensor, that's it, it's gone. So you have to use a new one. And we do that twice every day. Uh, <clears throat> and again, it's, this is how everything works because when we sense, when we sense the atmosphere um, and we get data from different levels of the atmosphere, when they do the same in Guadeloupe, and the same in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. at the same time, and you go down to Trinidad and so on. That is where you get a, a representation of exactly what is happening in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And that's where you can draw your charts and know where high pressure is, or low pressure, and so on. So it's a matter of bringing all the data together. Mm -hmm. um, even even when we, we look at the aviation sector, uh, sometimes you may be taking a flight from St. Martin to Europe and one time it may take eight hours and another time same aircraft mm. and so on you may take seven and a half hours. Um, that is why meteorological services provide flight folders. So 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 pilots and, and companies and some of those bigger companies they even have their own meteorologists and so on that provide that information so they can know the where the upper level winds mm. are, where a jet stream maybe or so on. Um, because based on the on the winds in the upper levels, you could burn less fuel, you right. could get there faster and so on. So all that sort of information um, from soundings and so on, where we know exactly what the atmosphere is doing, um, helps the aviation sectors and everything else in terms of um, general f uh, meteorological forecasts. And so on. I remember many years ago when I went to the Met Office at the airport, you'll see pilots walking in to get their report. The briefing, yeah. yeah. You still have an office then? We, we still have an office. We are mandated to have an office at the airport, but um, because of technology and so on, you can hardly that. find um, pilots coming into the airport for briefings unless it's maybe some hurricane or something like that and they're trying to get some information. But everything is online, so people just pull their computers and, and they get all the information. Oh, technology, <laughs> yeah. everything changes. Um, for example, even the flight folders, before you'd have to do a flight folder and have the, have the folder there with right. all the different um, layers in the air, the wind speed and uh -huh. direction. Now, all that is computerized. That's on the website, so someone can just go on the website, click, and get the flight folders and everything. You know, when, when you look at the weather, and I was telling you this before we started, you know, growing up in St. Martin, we didn't care about the weather. When I went to America, I had to wake up every morning and make sure I checked the weather. You know, now, since Hurricane Lois and after Hurricane Irma, we are nervous as it right now. Yeah, and um, so I, I, think, I think the nervousness could be with reason, but I think sometimes we need to cross-check ourselves. Um, I always say that if you're not relaxed, you cannot make right decisions. Uh, if you get too excited and so on, you may be looking for a pain or something like that. It's right there. Mm. And if you're not relaxed, you wouldn't find it. When we look at reality, half of our life we live in a hurricane season. Because the hurricane season is six months in every year. So half of our lives we live in a hurricane season. And it is similar to someone who lives in New York. 
who would be a custom with snow and so on. So if if persons living in New York, they know if it's going to snow tomorrow, they have to put on a certain boots, they have to have their coats and so on. I think we need to just be relaxed a bit. This is where we live. Um, if a hurricane is going to affect us, few people, if any, are going to leave the country and go anywhere. So you have to be here to deal with it. Um, so it's all about preparation. What can I deal with? Is my house ready for a major hurricane? That means category three and higher. Or um, if there's going to be a category three hurricane, I need to go to a shelter or I need to go to my f family members who would have a better structure. These are the kind of things you have to assimilate. Um, how long do I need to put on my shutters if I have shutters? Um, beginning of the hurricane season, I used them the last time. Did I check to see if everything is okay? If I have to physically put them up? If it's winding shutters, have I wound them down to see if they need to be greased mm -hmm. and that sort of thing? Once you do those sort of things, you can be more relaxed. Then at the end of the exercise, you don't even need to know seven days before if a hurricane is really troubling you because you may just need two days to put everything else in place. Some people may just need one day. Yeah. And again, it, it, is, it has to do with our life pattern. We're into the hurricane season. Do I have some extra canned foods based on what the Office of Disaster Management says? During that period of time, do I keep extra water? But you're always going to drink water. So you'll be using the water, but you always make sure. If, if for example, you use one carton of water a week, you just make sure you have two cartons. So in case you have a storm also coming, you, you're you not going to find yourself having to rush and buy everything. And that's still uh, happening today. Yeah, it still happens. And I think it's a matter of how we, we organize ourselves. Because like I said, half of our life we live in the hurricane season which is six months in the year. We can still get events out of the hurricane season that, that can affect us. So to make life easier, we have to be very organized. Um, two days, three days before hurricane, you, you do not want to find yourself having to look and see where your grandmother's medication is, where X, Y, and Z papers are, and so on. All these things should be organized in a file, passports, right. and so on, that if you need to secure them, it's just a matter of taking them because no matter what you do, if a hurricane, especially if a major hurricane, you're going to have some sort of excitement in you. But the more organized you are, is the more you will be able to manage it. So it's 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 critical that you manage things before and um, just talking about in terms of organizations and so on. It is very important. Um, and you'd get that from the Office of Disaster Management that you have a, a family plan. So you don't want to find yourself um, as a family. One person takes on, or, or two, two people would look to do one responsibility. And another important responsibility is not done because it's not assigned to anybody. You know, so whoever would be responsible for taking down the television or um, securing the television would know that's their duty. Right. And um, if you have those plans, and a lot of times when people hear what plans, they think about a big document and so on. But it is something that you could talk about over breakfast or dinner. Um, you know, if we have a hurricane, you do this, you do that, you make, you make sure that the pet is okay and sufficient um, food and, and, and so on. You know, um, you would be responsible for making sure all documents are in place and so on. Once you organize like that, you can deal with the situations a lot. You know what, what's so surprising? We live half our lives in hurricane, as you mentioned, which is true. But every year, we're still rushing to get water, food, etc. Not all of us, because I don't do it, but a lot of people does. And you'll think that by now that we've fall into the pattern that started in June for us, start of hurricane season, we know what we have to do, but it just doesn't happen. Some, some people blame, some people blame um, the whole idea of cash flow, but I think a lot of cases it's not. Um, it's just that we just don't prepare ourselves for it, mm -hmm. you know, and um, even, even in terms of when we, when we look at a lot of new things happening with development and so comes different challenges. Uh, I have been here for 10 years, but when you look at developments and so on, we notice that 
we get a lot more flooding now than before. Um, going forward with climate change, we're now talking about um, heavier rainfall. So as I'm going to ask you to hold that thought because I have to go to a break. When we come back, we'll speak about that in a lot more. All right. My guest is Mr. Isaac, uh, head of the Meteorological Service, and St. Martin. We'll be right back. Please tell us. In order to know what you want out of life, you need to observe, listen, and try it yourself. Mm. Promises, promises, we can make it if we work together. That's just how it is. How it is. Let's stand strong Ooh, and serve the land. Ooh. Working hard as one nation, yes we, can. Oh, yes we can. The more difficult it is to achieve, the more satisfying it is to make it. Just believe in us, we'll see you through it all. Oh, 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 oh. never give up. Oh, never give up. We can make it. Oh, 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 oh. Never forget those who were there for you. And if you dream big, you might just achieve it. The power to Standing for community, OGB got the power to serve, the power to serve. We got the energy, OGB. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pin code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit yes, the uh, head of the Met Office on St. Martin, uh, Mr. Isaac. We're here speaking with him about weather, etc. right here in St. Martin. And you know, the thing is, uh, Mr. Isaac, is that you know, we experienced Hurricane Irma, the strongest storm what, in modern times, right? Um, when you look at this island today now, like last week, we had some pictures of Potential, potential storms in the Atlantic. And people went crazy with formations just off the coast of Africa that are like a week, 10 days out. I can't understand why is it that we are so nervous when at the same time, um, it's so far away. Yeah, and um, that's, again, that's one of the challenges we face. A um, couple of years, well, maybe about 10 years back or so, no mm. one would be really studying anything off the coast of Africa. Um, now a simple wave coming off the coast of Africa, persons get excited about it. Although we have about 60 waves come off the coast of Africa every year. Mm. Um, waves would pass through St. Martin and you would not even be aware that a wave went through St. Martin uh, because a wave could bring a rainfall a significant amount of rain based on the wave, but then sometimes a wave might go through, you get some precipitation to the north or the south of the island, and you, you're not even aware. But August and September, we are worried. Yeah, but uh, we get, and that's why I said it's, because of past experiences, mm. people get very anxious, but it is very difficult now for anything to happen for you not to know, um, because there's so much information available. But you have to be very careful of trying to get anxious too early. Um, and that's what we, we were discussing earlier. How much time do you really need to take care of your needs? If everything is organized, you really don't need much time. So knowing seven days before that a storm is going to affect you um, is neither here nor there. And even seven days before, 
you're really not certain as to what is going to happen. So you might really just be building up anxiety. Um, and then seven days, the day when you think that the storm would affect you, um, it's just a usual day with bright sunlight and everything else. Now, before the break, you, you mentioned about flooding. And I noticed now if we have just about five or eight minutes of heavy rain, we already have flooding. That never used to happen before. Yes, and it will continue to happen mm -hmm. um, because there are two things at play here. You're building more buildings, so you have less land. And while you're, the land on, on St. Martin is not that absorbent of so much water like other places with very strong vegetation, it plays a role in, in what we call percolation. So the rain falls on the trees and some of that water goes into the soil and some is runoff. When you have a hillside with a lot of vegetation and so on, you get less runoff because the soil plus the trees will break some of that water coming down. When you build, you're now putting in a roof. No water is going into the soil, no water is going, trees are not breaking it off. So you're getting a lot more um, water coming down the hillside. Faster too, right? Faster too because of the um, gradient of the slope. Um, water moving fast will cause more damage, will bring down um, rocks and soil and so on, uh, will eventually clog drains and then you will get flooding. So that's one of the things you, you have to deal with as you develop. The other scenario we're looking at, um, why we would have more flooding going forward is because of climate change, we may not necessarily have more rainfall a year. So, for example, if the total rainfall in St. Martin is 100 inches a year, we not, may not necessarily move up to 200 inches a year. But the intensity of rainfall is expected to be higher. So, instead, we are normally you would maybe get um, two inches of rainfall in six hours. You may get two inches of rainfall in two hours, mm. which is entirely different, and that is what we call us flash flooding because you're getting heavier showers. So you get a he heavy showers for about an hour and everywhere is flooded because the drainage system cannot, cannot handle it and so on. And these are the kind of things we, we're looking at with climate change. And these are the kind of things that we have to look to, to mitigate against. Um, if not, we're going to deal with a lot of inconveniences because you have, for example, um, Phillipsburg, which is very flat. And we, you, you know a number of other areas um, on in, in St. Martin that are pretty flat and would have um, flooding. And then you, it would be a lot of inconvenience because vehicles cannot move yeah. and, and that sort of thing. So these are the things that we have to look at. What about, um, someone was telling me that Hurricane Irma that we had in 2017, that if that hurricane had a lot of rainfall, we would have had more damage in terms of life. That is that is correct because uh, we would describe it basically as what we call a dry hurricane. Mm -hmm. There was not much rainfall um, with that hurricane. Um, also, if you had to look at the scenario of um, uh, Damien that affected um, Bahamas, yeah. Irma was in a slow moving hurricane. And sometimes we have to understand those things. So, for example, uh, we could have a Category 4 hurricane that has less of an impact on a country than a Category 3 hurricane. Really? Yeah. So, so look at the scenario. You have strong winds in a Category 4 hurricane, mm -hmm. but that hurricane could affect you for four hours. So you have strong winds for four hours. But you could get a Category 3 hurricane that could affect you for seven hours. Okay. So you get that wind for a much longer period of time. So if a hurricane is moving fast, the impact is less than if it's moving slower. Now that is just on the wind aspect of it. The, the, the saying is also true with the rainfall. So if it's going to spend more time in your area and then you have um, a hurricane that has a lot of water with it, if you're very susceptible to flooding and so on, then you will have a lot more issues with, with, with flooding. So these, these are the sort of dynamics we have to deal with. And it is not just a one call when people just say, okay, it's, a, it's only a category this, or it's just a, a category one hurricane, or it's just a storm. 
you have to take all those things into consideration how quick the system is moving how much rainfall is associated with the system um, another thing too if if a system is passing south of you versus whether it's passing north of you the, the dynamics are different because really? most times if, it, if, it, if a system passes south of you a lot of times most of the convection is towards the north of the system so if it is south of you you could get impacted more than if it is the same distance north of you because okay. you have less convection on the on the, on the southern side but all those things are necessary always hold so that is why we know what we try and do is that we concentrate a lot of imp on impact forecasting so we would work with for example the officer disaster management from me and so on mm. and um, it is not always it's 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 work in progress but that's where we want to go uh, we just don't want to say that expect two inches of rainfall but we want to see what two inches of rainfall mean so two inches of rainfall means ex example that this area and this area could be flooded um, you need a lot of data to do that and so on um, but that is the direction we, we want to go um, it is okay to tell to say that um, during this storm expect sea swells of eight feet but apart from maybe people into boating and so on yeah. what is what is eight right, feet right, right. so we want to say that yes with eight feet the seas are going to come in that amount and persons close to the shore should secure x y and z and so on so that's that's what we do you know a lot of emphasis well in fact globally that's where the world meteorological organization is going a lot of concentration on impact forecasting but impact forecasting would then mean that you need a lot of of data to make those sort of decisions well, it's you know it's it's quite interesting. We've come a long way. Uh, I remember as a little boy hearing people speak about Donna and those different hurricanes. And I've gone through uh, Lois and Irma, and believe me, um, before Lois, I had no respect for hurricanes. After Lois, everything changed. And I think we have a a new generation now. I just experienced Irma in 2017, and their attitudes are changing now. Yes, um, so you have you have that. I mean, I I remember as a boy, I always wanted to see a hurricane, mm -hmm. um, and the first one I went through, I've gone through quite a few after that, but the first one I went through was Hurricane David in 1979, and um, that experience because you did not have satellite photos, you right. did not have radar. In fact, people went to work the morning, you know, and so on, and then things just changed. So. Um, we have to be vigilant and we also have to remember that every year, I want to take my time to say that, every year we don't have a hurricane, the probabilities of getting a hurricane are increased. Okay, so every year we don't get a hurricane, the probabilities of getting a hurricane increase. Some people look at statistics and say, oh, it, 20 years for this one and we have another 20 years before we get something it doesn't work like that grenada didn't get a hurricane in 50 years and they got two major hurricanes in two years um so <laughs> the the drill is and it's a for me it's a simple drill this is your live. if you live in japan you're going to have to deliver earthquakes if you if you live in the u.s if you live in new york you're going to have to deal with snow we live in the Caribbean, we love the beach, we love the sea and everything else. We're going to have to deal with hurricanes, storms, um, thunderstorms and so on. And if, th th this is another thing. Yes, thunderstorms can be dangerous. But you know, now I find that even persons talking about no we should not school because there was a thunderstorm. <laughs> really? And, and it's, it's ridiculous because if based on our forecast a number of times in a year mm -hmm. we're going to forecast for thunderstorms um if every time you do that you're going to have a th thunderstorm cell give you some rain and have some lightning and thunder you're going to call off school you're going to have a lot of days without school and what you would find happening also is that a lot of days when we forecast that well not a lot but there are going to be days when we're going to forecast thunderstorms and you will not get it um, sometimes you might see lightning in the distance and so on. It just means that the cloud doesn't come over you and so on. And and we, that's why we always emphasize that meteorology is not a perfect science. A forecaster could be on duty, see all the ingredients for heavy showers tomorrow. And um, 
just before the cloud reach over the island, it rains out over the sea. It rains over Sabo Station. It rains over Anguilla. I mean, you, you, it, we can even close it in. You could have very hand, heavy rain fall in Phillipsburg and nothing in Colby. You know, so so that is what it is. You know, and and that is what we have to live with. You're right because um, I think it was Saturday we had a lot of rain, and I went and looked at the radar picture of St. Martin. I didn't see any clouds. It was heavy rain for about ten minutes. Yeah. So so these these things happen, mm -hmm. and then and and that's even when we're going back to models and those things and what people look at. You can look at a satellite picture today, especially the enhanced ones. And when we say enhanced, we're talking about those that have right. color on them. You could look at a satellite picture today, and I could show you a satellite picture showing red over St. Martin. And on that day, no rainfall. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. And I can send you another picture another day with the same satellite with red over St. Martin, and you're getting a downpour. Why is that? It all has to do with what's happening, for example, in the upper upper levels of the atmosphere um, and so on. And, and that is what people don't understand. So looking at a satellite photo, you won't always get it right. Okay. You have to know what is happening in the upper, if there's upper level support for it to rain. If there's not the support, the clock will just pass over and you never get rain. So you have those kind of things happening. And the atmosphere is very complex. I mean, think of how long there has been meteorology. Think about the, the sort of processes we use in computers and everything else. And there are still errors. So the atmosphere is very complex. You, you, you go to school and you have a subject called satellite meteorology. You have a subject called radar meteorology. So why would someone bring you into a classroom to teach you satellite meteorology and radar meteorology among with other things and you do a lot of maths and physics and everything else to understand the atmosphere and somebody feels they can just pull a computer and understand everything it doesn't work like that you may do it and you may get it right sometimes but there are times you're going to get it wrong because you don't understand the dynamics of the atmosphere so i guess we are all people like myself and the general population we just at the mercy of the weather man. <laughs> no, we are not, and that's why we always encourage. And, and and I don't want persons to get it wrong. Yeah. Nothing wrong in looking at models. It's a learning process. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that try not as much as possible when you look at things to think that you're an expert, and especially passing information to persons that they might take directives from. Because even with us, I, I'll give you. I could call four meteorologists and give them a scenario. And I'm almost certain that based on the scenario I give them, four of them are not going to write the same forecast. Because you're really pulling things together and putting pictures together in your mind to come up with certain things. That is what a lot of the computers have taken away and we're getting closer. But you still need the human mm -hmm. um, input. And again, even with what the, the computers are putting out, um, there are what we call micro features that you, the computers may not cover. So, for example, a model might cover a whole synopsis of, of, of an area. But if, for example, the country is a very mountainous island versus a country that is very flat, yeah. the dynamics for the rainfall will be different. But the model may not capture that because that might not be embedded in a the, in, in the model. So the same cloud that would maybe go over Dominica and give Dominica two inches of rainfall. Might go over Anguilla and you may not get any rainfall. With the same moisture content and everything else in the cloud. But because of the mountains in Dominica where you get upliftment, then you get that sort of rainfall. Over Anguilla, that same cloud could just pass because you don't have that sort of upliftment. So all those things are part of the science that people have to, have to know and understand to really make... Um, Good decisions as to what yeah. what is going on. So we don't have to get nervous every time we see dark clouds on the horizon. No, I think what it is, it's as simple as that. You and and there are times, like I said before, there are times that you're going to go to work in Phillipsburg and there's going to be a downpour and you're going to get flooding. That's that's life. Um, what I would recommend you do in a case like that, you just stay in the building. Most times, unless it is something significant, we would put out something. Uh, most times the shower would be for about an hour and after the, the water was, will go down. They're going to blame the weatherman. <laughs> well, a lot of times we, we, we train to uh -oh. take, take blame um, because 
sometimes mm. there's there's rainfall and you meet people and they tell you, oh, you all didn't say anything. And then you ask the person, honestly, did you lo- listen to the weather mm. report this morning? Boy, and then they tell you no. But it's just the nature of people to say you didn't say that, you know. Um, but somebody has to do it. And <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately, we are the ones to do it. I think the, the science has developed tremendously. Um, one of the, 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 the path of hurricanes um, within three or, or four days is, is reasonably accurate. Uh, where there's a lot of work to be done is in the intensity. The intensity forecast um, needs a lot of improvement. But we in the hurricane committee, um, we continue to look at those things and make recommendations for different research to be done on those things and so on. Well, I'm glad that you came in and had this chance to sit down and speak because I wanted my audience to get a little understanding of what you're doing, not speaking specifically about a particular hurricane. Although we are in the hurricane season right now, but we only have about 25 seconds remaining, so it's all yours. Yeah, I I must say that it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I would just admonish everyone, just know where to get your information. Um, Nothing wrong in going on, on online, you have certain pages. The National Hurricane Center, that's basically responsible for information. They have the website, you can get information there. Um, but when you see a cone, do you understand what a cone means? Um, when there's a development within a certain period of time, um, do you know exactly what it means? And it is our responsibility as a Met Service responsible for St. Martin to break it down to the layman's term and what would it mean for St. Martin. So as much as possible, always check our website, which is meetusxm.com. And um, we also have uh, Facebook that persons can check. And pretty soon we would have radar that they could look at and so on. So we're developing, we're developing our human resource, we're developing our capacity so that we can better serve the country. Well, Mr. Isaac, thank you again for success. Hope we can have you back. And I hope we don't have any hurricanes for a long time. <laughs> I hope so myself. It will um, a lot more less stress for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Much thanks success. So All right, take care. Bye.